All right, ladies and gents, I'm not going to start the show the same that I normally do because, I mean, you probably know. You were probably watching. If you follow along with this podcast, you were probably watching the regional finals and you know what just went down. If you didn't, we're about to explain it to you because this was one of the craziest days in Apex Legends history. Not Apex Legends esports history, but Apex Legends history. We're going to break it down right here. I've got Jayhawk with me. The boys I would actually, are out of town. Just real quick, I would take a step further. I think this is one of the craziest days in esports and video game history. I was. I don't think anything like this has ever actually happened to an esport. Like live. I was thinking about that. I I was thinking about that. I, I was trying to figure out if it has. I'm not sure either. But whatever. It's yeah. it was a crazy day. It was it was a crazy, crazy day. So um Enoch is out of town. Um Weeps is out of town. So I already had a plan and I had an idea that I was gonna ask Jayhawk, me and him run the show and and try to and you know break down the regional finals. Little did we know what we were in for this week. Uh, not a whole lot to break down, to be honest with you, but, uh, let's just get right into it. Jayhawk, how are you doing, my man? Uh, I'm good. I I don't know how to feel after today, dude. It's <laughs> wild. It's a wild day. Like I, oh. it's a wild day, dude. <laughs> it's, it's a wild day. So let's, let's just jump into it. Uh, regional finals game one went off without a hitch. Well, kind of, there's a little bit of a lag to start. And I think we all kind of noticed that we're like, eh. But, you know, it's Apex, is what it is. Game two, similar circumstance. We're like, okay, everything's fine. Game three, out of nowhere, uh, you notice and you look over at Dark Zero and you notice they're only a two-man and you're trying to figure out what the hell happened to Jen Burton. Where is Jen Burton at? Uh, and then clips started to surface and people in chat started saying Jen Burton was hacking or Jen Burton was hacked. Both were going throughout chats. Everybody's like, what the hell is going on? Nobody really understood. And then we started to see the clip surface on Twitter. All of a sudden, you see a clip. Jen Burton is playing. All of a sudden, he can see everybody on the map. And he's shooting his bow check. And his arrows are not flying where he's aiming them. They are flying and hitting other people. And he starts screaming frantically, I've been hacked. I've been hacked. You see a little chat box in the side, Destroyer 2009. He's saying stuff in the chat. Then we're like, okay, all right. Well, that was weird. And then all of a sudden you go into the next game and Imperial Howl in the middle of the game, he gets aimbot, he gets hacked. Now he's running around with hacks. He says, uh, I'm being hacked right now, promptly just starts shooting people, ripping them to shreds. And uh, he has his reasoning for that, which we will get into here in a moment. But after that, it took about 15 minutes and Apex Esports put out a tweet and they said for, uh, you know, for competitive integrity we would be postponing the na regional final and chaos ensued and then all the clips started coming out all the tweets started coming out funny serious whatever but basically what has happened here is destroyer 2009 a hacker who has been around for a while was somehow able to get access to both jen burton's computer and imperial house computer and implement hacks on both computers and just absolutely torch the regional final for NA. Jay hockey. I, I, you were live when it was happening. I was tuned into your stream basically the whole time, but I mean, from your perspective, did I, did I leave out anything from the timeline? Did I, did I miss anything uh, from, from what just took place in uh, this regional final? No, that's pretty much it. And here's the funny part is, so from my perspective, I am uh, I got invited to be on the main broadcast, right? And they bring me in every three games. And so game three, like you said, is when it starts. They are not delayed, right? So what we are watching is 10 minutes behind what they're watching. So I jump into the stream with them and I have no clue that any of this has happened because obviously no, nobody has watched it yet. And they're not talking about it. They're not acknowledging it yet because obviously they're hoping that it's just against Jen Burton and that it's a local thing. And if he's removed from the lobby, as sad as it would be for Dark Zero, that it would stop. So I jump into the main broadcast and normally we kind of recap the games. And then they start asking me random questions about like my thoughts on the meta and everything. And I thought that maybe like somebody crashed or something. They're just buying a little bit of time. I finish it, I get back to my stream, all of a sudden everybody's spamming that Jen Burton has been hacked. I go, look, and you're right, like, the guy's been hacked in the picture of it happening. Uh, yeah, in the chat, it says Apex Hacking Global Series. This is being typed in the game chat to DZ's team from Jen Burton's account. 
by Destroyer 2009 and random is what it says. And then all of a sudden, Jen Burton, first off, before even that showed up on screen, actually, in the game, basically what happens is Jen Burton is shooting a bow. He's shooting the, um, what, what, is, what the hell is the, the name of the bow called? Bow check. He's shooting the bow check, and he's looking, they're in barometer, and he's kind of in the top side of barometer, not like the ultimate height, but like, you know, the little high ground, and he's looking down at a team below the pipes over on the west side of it, and he's shooting the bow, and he thinks he knocks someone, but if you pause it at the right moment, you can see that arrow is not going down. It's going out, and so all of a, that's when we realize that something is wrong, and if you go to Zapto, who is on E8, he is on the opposite side of the zone, out in the open, and from his POV, all of a sudden just knocked. Two bow shots straight to the body. The guy's down on the ground. He just thought that maybe somebody saw him from afar. It is what it is. Like he was making a, a risky cross. He goes down for it. Then you go back to Jen Burton's stream, and a menu appears on screen that says TSM Halal Hook. It shows aimbot stuff. It shows there's a vote for Putin checkbox. Like it shows FOV stuff, no sway, target lock, auto fire, magic bullets, all this kind of stuff. And every single player in the game has their name above their head, their health like bar, and the color of armor that they have, as well as a number indicating, I think, maybe how far they are from him. So he he starts freaking out. He's like, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, like I'm being hacked. Zero's like, I know, I know. Can, like, can you continue to play the game? He's like, no, I can't. They tell him to quit. He quits out of the game. They finish the game out. He was the only player that gets hacked. They, the game just continues to play. DZ is a duo, Zero and Sykes. They actually end up getting second. So shout out to those guys. That was that was probably the craziest yeah. part of that game, <laughs> to be honest. They pick up 19. And like I said, on the main broadcast, I'm being asked about them playing as a duo. I have no idea why they're a duo. Because I, when you when I jump in, I obviously didn't get to see the game because I'm skipping ahead, at, you know, on what they're seeing, and so I'm just kind of making it up on the spot, like, oh, DZ, you know, they're a great team, blah blah blah. Um, so that happens because Jen Burton left the game. I think they're expecting maybe it's something local on his PC, so they get Gent, who is the DZ sub. Um, he jumps into the game and he's going to play out game four for them. They have the extended delay. Gent jumps in the lobby. They go forward. They're going to keep playing. Then, like you said, Hal gets hacked. Hal was a little different. He doesn't have the wall hacks. He doesn't have the whole menu. They're not typing in his chat. All of a sudden, Hal is shooting this one guy on the bridge, and I think he can feel it because he's aiming at a guy, and his his gun is, like, is not moving. It is locked onto that man. He shoots, and you can see the bullets go in three different directions and injure all three members of the opposing team. Hal starts screaming, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. Reps is like, bro, quit the game. Hal just doesn't quit the game. Hey, we were both, <sighs> me and you were both screaming. Like, we can pull up the clips. Me yeah. and you were both screaming, leave the fucking game. Like, yeah. we're screaming at the top of our lungs. How? Leave the game. And instead of leaving the game, he just starts shredding, yeah. motherfucker. Like, he was killing everybody that was walking in Which, front of him. Before that, he goes, what if I just don't shoot? And then a guy yeah. pushes their building and he just destroys Unloads. him. Like, puts him down. Unloads. And he does it to multiple different people, just destroys legacy on this push. And then finally the game ends and it gets canceled and everybody finds out what's happening and Hal's been hacked, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then we have a long pause. ALGS announces, like you said, that the regional finals has been postponed. Um, before, Funnily enough, before that game, Hal actually says on stream, uh, if I get hacked or we get hacked, I think the only way that we can get them to cancel the game is if we just don't quit. And that's that's what he did, because in DZ's example, they didn't end the game when he quit the game. He he quit the game instantly. They let the game play out. I'm assuming because it happened to two different players on two different teams, they would have canceled the game anyway. But Hal just started putting people down and they're like, OK, we got to end this. Um, so, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, the memes are going like crazy. People are starting to post stuff about what could potentially be happening. I got a response from Bemic on one of my tweets. Let me try and find it. He's got experience in the the cybersecurity stuff, and there was a couple other different people talking about this. But uh, let me find it one sec. Because I had tweeted to you talking about the question is: Is this on their PCs? Meaning, did they click a link? Did something get downloaded? Is it some sort of malware? What like did that happen or is it going through the game, the anti cheat itself? Because if they clicked a link, 
naturally that's somewhat avoidable. Um, but if they went through the game itself and he doesn't need access to your PC in that sort of way, then things get uh, get real scary. Bemick responds to that conversation that you and I are having. And he says, not claiming to know what's going on with any sense of certainty, but given my education in cybersecurity, I have an above average idea of the possibilities. My guess, uh, RAT, aka Remote Access Trojan, affected Jen's PC and the bad actors took it over remotely running code. The more likely answer is an RCE, Remote Code Execution Exploit, which allows for the bad actors to basically pick anyone to do this to. Uh, he then says there have been historic RCE zero day exploits in the source engine, which Apex engine is based on, which makes me think that the latter is the case. Scary times. Uh, then somebody else responds to that. Destroyer 2009, the guy who did this, has done a lot of fun stuff with the internal scripting in Apex. You were able to prevent people from shooting and make them drop guns, ammo, and other stuff. Being able to run any arbitrary script for others is def and entry for a potential RCE. So, yeah, basically it sounds like this guy was essentially able to do it to almost any player that he wanted it to happen to. So, The, the craziest part about this, and I, like you, you already mentioned it on your stream, but I think everybody was thinking it, is that if Destroyer2009 doesn't type in Jen Burton's chat, there is a high possibility that his career, no matter if they figured it out or not, would be potentially in the balance at right. all times. Because anytime he does anything successful, everybody's going to go back to that. Yeah. So say what you want, like Destroyer 2009. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the one good thing he did was type in that chat because at yeah. least he let people know that it wasn't Jen doing it. Like he wasn't the one actually doing it. It was Destroyer. And he kind of saved Jen Burton's ass right there because if he doesn't say anything forever, people are going to wonder about Jen Burton. This guy's already won multiple lands. Uh, he's been very successful, things like that. For Hal, it didn't really matter because they had already done it to Jen. Everybody knew that something was up. And then it happens to, to Hal. He doesn't really need to do anything there. He can just say what was going down. But it like it was just, it, it, it could have been so, so, so much worse, which is wild to even mention because it was already really bad. And there's already a lot of bad that's going to come from this. But like it could have been so much worse for yeah. Jen. Like it, 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 it could have been like catastrophic for his career. Yeah, because, I mean, if you think about it, Jen is, he was accused of cheating, like, a long time ago. And it was because he was one of the first controller players that, like, really abused aim assist. And I don't say that in, like, a derogatory way. Like, he was so nasty at controller that people just thought he was cheating. As we've come to know over the years, Roller's just kind of broken. He was just one of the first ones that was at that level uh, that we see most controller players at now. And so... He was really, he, he had been accused previously, and that's just sort of something that maybe kind of sticks with you to a lot of more casual people. And now imagine that this hacker, first off, doesn't pop it up in the chat, makes it look very inconspicuous as if like this isn't happening to him, but he maybe is doing it himself and it just accidentally popped up and then doesn't do it to anybody else. I mean, sure. I, I don't know if there's some sort of proof they could have come to. Like, I'm sure there is. Like, they scan his PC or something. Like, then they look into his account and they're able to somehow figure that out. But think about how many people's opinions of him would have instantly just been, now nah, he's cheating. And then they don't see all the other stuff related to, oh, he got cleared or whatever. Um, and then even, like, let's say they can't find proof. Like, it, it could have been a situation that was a lot worse. But I, like I said, I can't believe we're saying this. But luckily, destroyer takes credit for it and then does it again so it's very clear that it's not just one player that's doing this it's like an attack on algs and apex yeah so the fallout from this uh the immediate fallout was that they had to postpone the regional finals we'll figure out if they're going to do that next weekend or maybe a couple weeks from now uh the other fallout is algs just released their land date so they just released all of the information for land, like where it's going to be. Obviously, it's going to L.A. Thought I was going to start the show off with this this week is that we now know where land is going to be. Uh, I believe it's going to be what May 2nd through May 5th yeah. is is the land date. So that's all happening in L.A., all that stuff. Um, it also takes away from that announcement now because yeah. all of a sudden people are just like, well, what the hell is going on here? We've got to figure out, first of all, how to secure this game land. It's not as important, I don't think. Or could it be like, I, I don't even know, like, could with, with all the computers and all the PCs being there, 
could this still happen at LAN? Like, is this a possibility? I don't even know. I don't think so. On LAN, they're not actually playing on their own accounts. These are accounts created for the LAN that have their name attached. It has like every cosmetic unlocked. It's all like EA side. Um, I don't even think they use Steam. I'm pretty sure it's the Origin. So if somehow this happened through Steam, I don't know. There's a lot of differences about LAN and... I'm pretty sure that LAN in the in the past, I think it was online technically. Like they're all just next to each other online, right next to a dedicated server. Um, but I think they might be like moving to officially it actually technically being a LAN where they're all hide, hardwired. Um, I don't know that for a fact, so don't quote me on that. But if that's the case, then yeah, I don't think this would be happening unless somehow they were to gain access to like the server itself, um, which I I don't know. Someone smarter than me could talk about that, but I don't think so. Yeah, so those are the those are the two major things that that come to mind for me. Um, my thoughts on all this, aside from all the funny stuff, which we're gonna get into later, there was some tweets that are Hall of Fame level tweets from some of these players. Uh, enemies comes to mind. We'll get to that in a second. But the whole time I was seeing this play out, the only thing I could think of was how are the players who now are having a security breach that could get very, very personal. Like yeah. they're, you don't know what information they have on their PC and you don't know what information they could access on that PC. On like that, if they, um, Jen Burton was on ahead. stream right after this happened. And he actually said that EA is telling him to not do anything on his current PC because they're pretty sure that he has access to it. So exactly. And you got to wonder so, like logins, like personal information, IP address, all that, like he could find where you live. Like he could, you know, exactly. The, the, the funniest part about that was when uh, he's like, don't worry guys, I don't have any of my bank information on this PC. And then he goes, wait, do I? And then he like goes and checks. And I typed in Jayhawk's chat. I was like, I would not have said that out loud. I would, I would not have said, Oh wait, let yeah, me go don't, check. Don't put quick. the idea in his head, right? Yeah. Don't even put the idea, but Let's just like getting back to my, my main point, like if you're the players and you have this, you know, that somebody now could potentially have the access to all of your most personal information on this computer. There is no way in hell I'm loading into game four. There's no way in hell I'm loading into game four. Listen, I get it. I understand. There is a chance. A lot of these teams were on the bubble. They're just trying to make it to land. I get it. hundred percent. You want to, you've worked hard, you've done everything you've could. On the flip side, the pros have been the most active in the community of saying, hey, there's a big cheating problem in this game and they're not doing anything about it. And they're the ones who keep saying it like, hey, we need more. We need more resources. There needs to be more on this side. The second that happens, I'm hopping into discord with all of those guys or trying to at least and saying, bro, we cannot load into this next game. We need to take a stand somewhere. Like we need to, at some point, pull it together and be like, this is not acceptable. Our personal info could be breached at any moment. We can't play this. Like we're not going to go anymore. Get the attention of EA, get the attention of Respawn. Be like, okay, like this is serious now. This is serious shit now. We got to figure this out because I don't, like I, I just don't, like the, when they were loading into game four, I was enraged. I was so mad. I was like, how are you guys still going into this game? Especially if you're like, how? How are you going into that game? I get it. He's got like a, a competitive drive that is higher than hell. High, you could argue the highest in the game's history. You want to win. You want to compete. You want to do all that. At the same token, you knew that you were going to be the next one targeted. You're the, you're the biggest guy. You were the biggest fish in this scene. How do you not be like, yo, we can't, we can't do this. We can't do this. Like we can't keep going and, and, and risking information like this. There's too much at stake at that point. Yeah. Which I did want to actually take a quick moment. Uh, Cause you, you guys actually tweeted it, but the, I don't know how credible this account is. I mean, they have a lot of followers and some credible people from the apex scene follow them. It's the anti cheat police department. They have like 30 K followers hideouts. One of the head guys follows them. And they just they did basically tweet out, I wouldn't play an EA game right now. So if you're listening to this as soon as possible, if you've played an EA game recently and you want to be safe, maybe change your passwords, all that kind of stuff. Um, because you, you just we don't know. We don't know. So I would definitely take that. Um, but on the player side, my guess is that I, I first off, I wonder how much they all know, because I don't know if 
Jen and Zero are telling this to the entire league chat. I don't know if this is with a separate private conversation with just the league ops. I don't know if they've announced it to all the players. So I don't give the players a, con a ton of flack um, because also the the initial theory like that I'm assuming ALGS had is that this is individually on Jen Burton's account. He might have clicked some link or virus or something. And if it's only on his account, it sucks. But how do you stop the entirety of the tournament because he made a mistake. Now we come to find out that it's not that. And so I, I imagine if they wanted to continue after it happened to Hal, I imagine there's no way. First off, because TSM sub is minus tempo and no offense to tempo, but he ain't playing no pro lobby dog. Um, <laughs> so I imagine TSM wouldn't have played. Um, but yeah, I think if, if they tried to force the game after that one, then yeah, they probably would have said, no, nah, there's no way. Yeah, it's 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 just a crazy it's just crazy. I I, yeah. I don't it, it's one of the the most insane things I've ever seen. I just think the other part of it too is when you guys have been saying when when the pros, when I say you guys, I mean the pros. When the pros have been saying as much as they've been saying about the the cheating situation and wanting to get something done, I feel like this would have been a golden opportunity to take a stand and just say, "Hey, like this is serious now. Like you guys have been saying things are getting done. We're not getting a whole lot of information. We're not getting a whole lot of feedback. We need something here because now we're playing your game. We're, you know, the ALGS brings in a lot of views, a lot of people, a lot of viewership. And the only thing we're getting in return is potentially our information being stolen and our PCs getting logged into mid match. Like there has to be some sort of, we, we got to come to some sort of agreement here. We need more communication. We need to see what's happening. Like it's just, it's reaching a level that is way, way worse than I think any of us could have really imagined. We knew people were cheating in, in pro lobbies, at ranked lobbies, all that kind of stuff. Even challenger circuit. We knew that this is next level. I mean, this is, this is nightmarish level, you know? Yeah, and uh, that's where I wanted to bring up that I think this is probably going to go down in esports history, quite honestly. Like the the major news media outlets that have already picked this up, video game history, because the biggest cheating scandals in terms of like esports and video games that I can really think of, um, like are largely like CS had some. I think Word there was some. Like, yeah, there was that one where one of the guys like literally had a USB that he loaded into his PC during a CS match that gave him like soft aimbot or something. And they caught him doing it. And he was trying to delete it while they were like trying to check his PC. Then there's the whole I buy power scandal that was like match fixing stuff. There's there's been a lot of scandals, but I don't know if there's ever been one where like the the players within the game themselves are like literally being injected with cheats live on stream or li like live in the match day. I don't know if that's ever happened, especially to the size of these particular players. Like I think how had like 40k viewers, dude. And that happened. So I don't know. This is this is certainly going to be a pretty infamous day, not only in Apex, but just esports and, and video games as a whole. And I have to imagine that, especially considering the timing of this, like you got to wonder if the guy was trying to send a message or something because there was the recent stuff about, uh, what's it called? Like the hideout stuff where he was kind of blowing up on Twitter and responding and everything. And I don't know. You just, you got to wonder if, I'm assuming this was all intentional. Doing it during NA regional finals, it's going to get the most views. He did it to Jen Burton and Hal, the two teams that have won, uh, you know, lands before. Hal's being the biggest person in Apex. Like, I think that this has to be somewhat intentional, and I, I, I do not envy the people behind the scenes right now that are having to try and figure this out. Because what do you, like? Quickly, what do we do? What do we do? Like, yeah, can we play I, tomorrow? I, like, how do they fix this? I don't know. And I, I, that's what I was going to ask you coming up here. But I, I would like to take a moment, first of all, to I, my heart goes out to the casters, man, because they Shout get so the much unnecessary flack from people in chat being like, why aren't you bringing this up? What the fuck do you want them to do? They, they can't, can't bring, bring it, it up. up. No, they can't. It's, bring that it, up. it's not in your job description to bl bring it up. And also, like when you watch an NFL broadcast or NBA or whatever, a lot of times, there's been very few instances where they'll actually play into it, but a lot of times you'll notice the camera will pan away from yeah. somebody running onto the field, and they try not to do it. I know Kevin Harlan did have an, a majestic cast of a of a streaker one time, I think during a Cowboys game, and yeah. it was awesome, but that that's a streaker running out on the field, okay? Like, this is completely different. 
this is the potential to be catastrophic for the the particular players who got affected by this. They can't do anything about it. And I already saw like Vicky Kitty was was tweeting out like talking about how difficult it is. Heart goes out to them, man, because they already have to deal with so much. They are getting criticized at an insane level for every single thing that they do, every single, every single thing that they say, the way they present it, all of that. This is not on them. They're just trying to get through the broadcast. They're just doing what they were paid to do, doing what they were told to do. And and that's that. I I, I hate seeing the hate go to them and uh and stuff like that. The other thing I wanted to bring up well, real was, quick before you leave the casters, I do want to add on to there. I was literally like I said, I was on the broadcast while they're trying to figure out this game three thing that's happened. And I didn't even realize anything was going wrong. Like I could kind of tell because it was going a little bit longer than any of the other times that I had hopped on during the EMEA one that something was happening, but I thought maybe a player had crashed. They're trying to push back the lobby. They improvised on the spot. Like they're asking me questions about the meta. Like they're just keeping this conversation flowing and it felt like it's just part of the broadcast. And then I, I see the discord afterwards and like, Hey, just like, we appreciate that. Like he kind of saved us here because he just kept the show rolling and didn't feel like anything was out of place. And then I see what all is happening. And so Honestly, like major credit to the casters because I, I'm i assuming because you, you have a person in your ear, a producer, and maybe the producer like feeds you an idea. But even they like somebody had to come up with that idea on the spot. Like, hey, we're, just ask him about this and let's roll with it. And so they're all coming up with questions that we're just talking about, like the meta apex, all that kind of stuff. And it felt it, to me, it felt normal in the moment outside of the fact that it was a little elongated. And so, yeah, shout out to the casters because they get a lot of a lot of crap for things that are completely out of their control, like the observers and you know the directors who are picking the POVs that we're watching on the screen. They're just having their entire job is just to react to what's happening. And this situation where they had to react to something that's like like ruining the game. And I thought they did a phenomenal job. So yeah, like if anybody's sending hate the caster's way, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I do I do want to go off. I, I went off on the players, it seemed like a little bit. I wasn't it wasn't meaning to go off on the players. It was more just like, hey, this was your chance to take a stand. I do also want to point a little bit of that flack at the game itself and like the 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 producers of the game, EA Respawn. If there was any moment where you needed to do something, now would be the time. Like I, I seriously, like, you know, I think when you're in this game and you you talk about this game, you try really hard to respect what exactly is going on. Like you really try because you know, it could mess up an opportunity for you later on. And also it's like, we don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. Like it's actually, it's probably a much harder than we think it is. So you don't want to go too hard when they, they've already produced the game. It's produced a lot of content. It's been going on five years now. It's a great game. We love it. But if there was ever a time for you to like take a good hard look in the mirror at yourself and be like, we got to do, we got to try something new. I think this would be the situation where you say, holy shit, we got to do something else. We, we got to try something else because it's not working. They're able to get in here. I would also like to point out, you, you mentioned uh, they could be doing something like Destroyer 2009 could have planned this ahead of time. It could have been like something that they wanted to get out in front of and kind of showcase. They've done this before in Apex, right? but it was more about the Titanfall community. Yeah, uh, I remember a few years ago it was save titanfall 2 yeah and they had basically run the entire game of apex for like what was it a couple days a couple days where, and the reason was because titanfall was so infested with hackers you literally could not play the game and i don't mean like you could load into a game and it was just chalked you literally could not load into a game for months months yeah so they, this has been done before like they have coordinated stuff like this before so it isn't completely out of the realm to be like, okay, they're, they're trying to send a message here. Message sent. Let's see if it gets received. Uh, as far as what we do from here, well, Jayhawk. Real quick, live update from We the People, you know, member of this uh -oh. podcast. He just tweeted, uh, I know this sucks and I feel for all the ALGS pros playing their asses off, but this is great for Apex and the players. Millions of people who are gamers and haven't played or heard of Apex definitely will now. Apex players are finally going to get a better anti-cheat. So that's the silver lining straight from Weeps himself. We're hoping that there's a response to this that would maybe increase the security of the game considering what just happened. Yeah, which I, I think that's what we're hoping, right? I th That's the hope. That's I think it has to. We'll see. 
I, I've been surprised many times by uh, by how how this game has come together. So we'll see if that actually goes down. As far as what you would do, um, I kind of want to just talk about like what what do we think the next steps are here? Right. Um, you just announced a land, and then all of a sudden this happens. Yeah. From their side of it, what do you think? Like, what do you do? Well, I mean, the biggest concern is how quickly can you solve the problem and play this regional finals? Because the longer you wait, the further back international scrims get pushed back because there's just no way they can move the land date. Like they've secured the venue. They've probably put a pretty like large deposit on it. It's like the USC basketball stadium. Like there's no way that this hasn't been planned out significantly far in advance. Um, they announced the date, all this kind of stuff like it would just be a disaster if they somehow had to move this back because I don't even know on this short of notice um, how you could just get another venue like a month later than you currently have one scheduled because those things typically get, you know, blocked up way ahead of time. And Apex, as like the way the stage setup works, they have to have a very specific like venue type. Like it can't just be any sort of venue. So um, plus you don't want like, you're not going to go to some NFL stadium that seats like, you know, 70,000 people. Cause that's just too big. So, um, I don't think they can move land date. The The next step is they have to figure out how to fix this and make sure that they can get this regional finals done. Um, in terms of the regional finals itself, games three and four have to be off the table. Th- those two games got compromised. I know that DZ got second and that's great for them. But like, for example, even just for Zapto on EA, the guy got killed because of an aimbot. It was unintentional. Jen Burton didn't realize it happened, but he got killed because of an aimbot. And who knows what happens if, if he stays alive, maybe EA goes on to get deeper in the game. Maybe that changes the way the other teams move throughout the game. It completely changes the outcome because it happened at the very beginning. So game three for Shrefs got the board. Obviously game four got canceled mid game. So there's no way that one uh, continues. Um, they need to somehow f- verifiably find out if games one and two were impacted whatsoever. There was no reports of any players saying that they were being hacked. But the reason I bring that up is because from the get-go, there was a handful of teams that were actually saying that they were lagging. And I, I was watching XS POV, Nocturnal's lagging. The guy has like nine ping, no packet loss whatsoever. And yet he's lagging. Like there's There's some choppiness there. I could just be throwing out some conspiracy theory and it could be completely unrelated. I don't think for the most part to any POV that I watched, it really affected anything because it was in the early game. And that does tend to happen in ALGS matches where in the earliest parts of the game, when everybody's alive and the maps loading in and all that stuff, that's the most likely where teams are going to lag. So I, I don't know if that's connected, but if somehow they find any bit of proof, that it was then the games one and two have to be chalked and you're gonna have to completely restart if they can prove that it wasn't a hundred percent um or at least like 99 percent, because if you're just assuming the lag thing like i said i don't think it really impacted things um i think that games one and two should still count because think about being a team like optic gaming or eternal like they were at the near the top of the leaderboard when this all of a sudden gets chalked through the first two games And if those games weren't affected, you've just taken away all the hard work that they just had in those first two games, especially Optic, right? Um, I don't know if it's where Eternal was actually after the first two games, but Optic was in second. And if DZ, they were like, if they hit match point and win and Optic's still there, Optic qualifies for land based on that scenario. So uh, there's a lot at stake here and certain people are going to get screwed over. And so I think the most fair thing to do, you just play after the first two games moving forward. But the the biggest concern is how fast can you get these games going? Because if this is a, an issue that affects like over a week, then like lands in a month and a half, dude, like things just get real dicey. If these NA teams don't even know if they're going, which luckily it is in NA, so they should like they don't need to get visas and all that stuff. Um, but still, it just it gets dicey because then you have less time to do scrims. You like it. Just, everything changes based on the results of this regional finals. Yeah, so it's pretty serious. It's pretty serious yeah. stuff. But there was some funny moments that came out of there, this. Bro. There was. There was. There 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 I saw a tweet from uh from Enemy. I, I don't <laughs> I need to find this tweet. I, it was one I of the it. funniest things I've ever seen. You got it? I got it. He said no, I just found it. He said maybe Digi Day wasn't my fault. Yeah. <laughs> and before that, design tweets, strip them of their titles and give them to us, the deserving champs. I knew that beam through the smoke on Digi Day didn't look legit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Optic Noct. Dude, Obviously, this they did is not the have best a great. tweet Bro, this is the of best the whole one. thing. Yeah, Optic Noct. They've had a terrible, terrible, terrible split one. He just tweets out, going to have to restart the whole pro league just to be safe. <laughs> and it's, for anyone who doesn't understand the context of that, Optic has done so bad. Like, they're in a position where they yeah, have to play top two to win. And so he's like, let's just let's just restart, you know? Yeah. It, it- <laughs> There's so I also I also typed out in your chat because when when the little screen first popped up on Jen Burton's uh his screen and he had the check mark clicked for vote Putin. Yeah. I saw a tweet this week where like Putin won like 87% of the vote for like his his election and I was like is this how Putin won? Just like Apex Legends ch- cheaters just forgetting to uncheck the box? Yeah. Maybe they wanted him in. I don't know. 87% is a lot though for a presidential election, you know? Maybe who knows? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> the reason the reason Russia maintains their president, Apex Legends players, just yeah. cheat. Maybe that's what it was. Who knows? Um, you know? Might I add another hilarious tweet um, coming from the man himself, Mr. Wyatt B. Some people are saying my performance during the Red Charity stream was actually <laughs> impressive considering there were cheaters in the lobby. And I just had I mean, to hit yeah. him back. The hacker gave you the cheats and you still didn't put up a kill. <laughs> Hold on. One kill, one knock. Or one kill, two knocks. Okay? One kill, two knocks. <laughs> maybe I had the cheats. Maybe that's how I got the Maybe one that's kill how you got the kill. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's what it was. No, uh, it was uh I, I also saw a snipe downs tweet, which was it, it summed up the Hal situation perfectly. Yeah. Snipe down said Jen leaving instantly after he has hacks, then Hal confirming he has them just to mow down legacy in the next team fight has me rolling in laughter from the sidelines. Like how, how literally said, I have hacks there. Uh, like reps is screaming at him. You got to leave. You got to leave. We're screaming at him through our screens and he just starts frying people and he's hitting everybody. He's his reasoning behind it. Cause I don't think we ever got to the reasoning. He said, if they knew that there was hacks out there, they're going to have to end the game. So I'm right. just going to shoot. I think he just wanted to mow. I think he just wanted to mow people down. <sighs> well, I he, think that was a psychological play by Hal. He's like, if I just mow these people down, it's going to knock them down a peg. They're going to be like, <laughs> holy shit, this guy's cracked, which they already know. Dude, but who knows? He said after He's the that game, kind of guy. he was like, oh, I wish I just went onto the roof and just started spinning and shooting. Like, imagine he had, like, a Spitfire or a Devo, and he's just, a, or, like, imagine, I wish, the, I mean, obviously I wish the hanging didn't happen, but I wish that because it happened, they gave it to, like, Enemy, because he's playing Rampart with the Sheila, yeah. and he's just yeah. like, I'm letting her sing, boys! And you just see, like, 10,000 damage rack up. Everybody just mowed down yeah. Enemy with all these kills. Like, that would have been the greatest clip ever, dude. Oh, dude. You know that Apex Legends players know how to have fun with this too, because afterwards they all jumped into a big Discord, and and Jen Burton was frying Hal. Yeah, he, he was, dude. He was calling him every name in the book, fucking around with him. It was so funny, bro. Design uh, jumped also, in the call, named himself yeah. Destroyer Two Thousand Nine, and changed his voice up, and was like, "I'm in the mainframe." <laughs> 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 oh my god. Furia his Watson. He hit he hit with one that uh this one kind of hits close to home for Apex. Guys, if we all agree to buy the new heirloom, maybe they'll have enough money to improve the anti-cheat. He brings up a good point. He brings up a good point. I don't know if we've heard that before. Also, Onmu, uh, he said, Do we get a refund on all of our prize picks? I that this one I relate to the most. Am I actually 21 and 0 in bets instead of 0 and 21? Is that actually maybe? Some are some people have said. That why it is actually twenty one and zero. I didn't say that no. though, but some people have said that I was actually twenty one and zero no. instead of zero and twenty one. No, I think if I a actually, team had cheats and you bet on them, they would die instantly. I feel somehow, like yeah. somehow you would still get it wrong. Yeah, they would. Some. I think. I think here's what I. First of all, let's just mention how impressive it is to go zero for twenty one in an entire split. Like that's actually impressive. Might be more impressive than going twenty one and zero. Actually, that's what I'm saying, because to be wrong that many times in a row, right? To be, it's 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 an anomaly. Yeah, I'm a statistical anomaly, you which are. I'm going to take that as a badge of honor and I'm going to run with it. I I'm think just going to run. You with should it. honestly start tweeting out your picks, like letting everybody know and like make it a whole thing of like, take the opposites. Go and yeah. like whatever I'm doing, you shade my picks and you go for the complete opposite and you let me know your record at the end of the season. Cause think about it. If somebody was already doing that, 
let's say they bet a hundred bucks on the first one. And then every time they take the exact winnings and do it again, they would have like thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars already. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> I, I, I told my dad about it this weekend. He was like, so, uh, what have you been doing? And I was like, oh, I got this prize picks thing. I've been betting on apex and hockey and stuff. He's like, oh, that's cool. Like, how are you doing? I was like, I'm 0 20. <laughs> and this is before the bet I put in today. And he's like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, I'm dead serious. He's like, well, what if I just make an account and then every time you bet, I just do the he's, opposite he's and then yeah. I just send you the money back. And I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome, dad. That'd be so cool if you did that. But I I, <laughs> I was like, that's kind of sad, though, if, if that's what we resort to at that point. Uh, I just got a tweet from from uh, Connor, our video editor. Apex is number eight trending on Twitter right now. Oh, yeah. Destroyer 2009 is trending, I think, too. So. Yeah, this it's... is going to be another word.exe thing where whenever something bad happens to you, you can just tweet that out. Yeah. Just to get some cheap likes. Yeah. Which I think is I think that's cool. It's going to be uh, it's going to be our Apex community little little inside joke that we have forever. Yeah. Was there anything By else the way, that you destroyed 2009 number 24 on trending? Not the for you thing. Literally the trending of Twitter on, destroyer on 2009. <laughs> ALGS is number eight. Destroyer 2009 at 24. Yeah. yeah. Was there any other uh, tweets that you saw that that you wanted to highlight? Any any other news you saw? Uh, this one, I mean, getting a little back to the, some of the more serious stuff. This one's actually from Tech. I don't know if we actually went over this one anymore. Um, but he said, this remote hacker thing raises a huge, huge concern for me. Imagine a scenario where a remote hacker is a fan of X team. He hacks their PC and gives them an additional 10% aim assist. Something unnoticeable, but obviously gives a big advantage. No one would know, not even the players. And I mean, that's, that's like a legit thought right now. Like, you, you know, like what, let's say they do run it back. What if this person they're you know, like a TSM fan, instead of just giving Hal straight aim bot, they were to but like, you know, raise the aim just a little bit. How would you know? Like maybe Hal would know, cause he might notice it's a little more sticky or something, but I don't know. It's, it's very strange cause it, it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities that you just don't know where this goes now. Yeah, and see, my my thing that I wonder now is, what are we going to do with these inputs? Because we have esports that have been going on for years and years and years and years. Yeah, that I don't know if, like you highlighted, I don't know if they've ever had a problem like this before. And right. now we have a game that is, I would say, at least fifty fifty on input. And now you have to really consider, like, what are we going to do? Like, do we? You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it opens a lot of questions that we just, we don't have answers for. And my hope is that there's, there's a verifiable way that they can like find the root of this and weed it out because the worry is, let's say they're, they're able to somehow fix it. Like they find the vulnerability, but they don't know how they did it. Um, which I, there was people in my chat that were saying he had a whole website that was posted on how exactly to do this. I would not recommend anybody going looking for that website because you have no clue. If that's a legit site that this guy put out, you have no clue what's on there. Like you could be getting some malware just from going there. Um, but if if they don't find the solution, then I don't. It feels like another breach could happen. Um, so yeah, things things are just gonna get real weird moving forward. Yeah, dude. I don't... Oh, this is going to be this is going to be talked about for a while. This is going to be talked about for a while. Uh, I don't know what we do from here. Obviously, if we get any more news, we can uh, we can update it on all of the the Apex, the podcast, um, you know, uh, socials as well as Jayhawk. Jayhawk will probably be the first one on it anyway. He he's got the juice. He knows what's going on at J A Jayhawk on Twitter, Twitch, everywhere. Follows YouTube as well. Puts out long form videos for all of the ALGS teams and and different storylines along the ALGS. Uh, any any final thoughts from you before we kind of send people on their way? And uh, you know what? This is what we should do. At least for games one and two, we can talk a little bit about what we were seeing from the regional final. I know it's all going to change because they're going to have to replay this at some point. But we were seeing some big performances coming out of like teams like DSG. You mentioned Optic earlier. Exit was really struggling. They could bounce back from a reset here. There's there's a lot of things going up in the air. Those are some bubble teams. Exit was just a few points out. Optic needed to win the whole damn thing, to be honest with you. Uh, otherwise, 
or just have like an absolute insane day. Um, any any little tidbits or, or teams that you were noticing as uh, as the first you know two games transpired? Yeah, I mean, off rip, dark zero. I think they were in first place through the first two games. They won game number two with a twenty three point dub. Like we talked about, optic. They were in second. They got second in that game two, and then a game one dropped did i think he crashed somebody said he crashed um or maybe he died and then crashed afterwards i don't know but um skittles was actually able to rat his way all the way into the top four so they got six points for that game so they were sitting in second on the day through the two games um you know so they were doing solid tsm was doing solid they were top five both games although they didn't have like huge points um so yeah i mean it, it was a good start complexity had a great start tsg had a great start um it was you know, obviously everything just kind of got overshadowed once that game three happened. Um, the, the weird part too, is after the game three, DZ had like, they had 48 total points despite having to play as a duo because Jen left the game. They had a 21 point gap between them and second. And that game th- three is not going to count, um, which is wild to say that they had a player get hacked, leave the game and they would want that game to count because that's how good they did in that one, picking up 19 points. And then all the other teams that were kind of around them, like Optic, DSG, Complexity, all the teams we just named, TSM, they didn't have a good game in that one. So uh, obviously it's not going to count because of the situation. But yeah, DZ looked like they were on their way. They were two points away from match point. They hit it in game four, most likely. And then knowing DZ, they probably close it out in game five or game six, realistically. But um, if we restart it back at game two, it's going to be a very interesting even playing field for a handful of teams. Like I said, Complexity, DSG, TSM, Optic, uh, DZ, all those kind of teams. Oxygen, I think, had a somewhat solid start, and they had 14 points. Not the worst. Um, meanwhile, teams like Xset, SSG, Furia, Moist, they were not looking good. Even through the th- third game as well, they were not looking good. Um, but the first two specifically... Like Furia drops two, Xset drops zero, Moist drops two, SSG drops zero. Game two, similar thing. Furia zero, Cloud nine zero, Xset two, Moist zero. Like a lot of big name teams were having a, a bit of a struggle bus of a day. Um, so who knows? This the the sucky scenario about this is that because it's going to be a whole new day, people who were in their flow, like an optic, it, it they might not recapture it, and other teams who were doing bad. Uh, like an X set or a cloud nine or somebody, they might be able to kind of recapture it because now they get a little bit more time to think about it. And be like, okay, we were doing terrible. Like we've actually now officially played like a couple regional finals, official games that weren't just scrims. Like how do we readjust from that? So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a weird scenario and uh, we'll see how it goes. But the first two games were pretty solid. It was a very balanced lobby for the most part at both the top and bottom. Yeah, luckily for you, I don't think Furio was doing too well either. Okay, hold on, hold were... on. No, no, no. Hold on. We got to talk about this, okay? Because to the Apex the Pod listeners, if you're a real one, you heard the pod where I was last on, where they they made me give every prediction on every possible team I could, okay? Yeah. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, because of that, I'm being painted as some Furia <laughs> hater because I gave the most lukewarm take you can possibly give. Okay, I want you to listen. Let's hold on. I want everyone to close your eyes and take your mind back to before the split. Optics not doing bad. Xset's not doing bad. Your mind is back before the split. Who are the top five teams in NA? The undoubted answer, DZ, TSM, Optic, Xset. Maybe you throw in a Hail Mary, like an not a Hail Mary. You throw in an SSG or a DSG or somebody else in there, right? But those other four, that's the answer. Those were the top five, okay? Keep that context in mind. When you guys asked me my opinion of Furia, I gave, like I said, the most lukewarm take you can give. I said, I don't know. I'm not picking them to go top five, but I think they could make LAN. I just don't think they're a lock, which if we've learned anything about Apex, literally no team in NA is a lock to make LAN except for TSM, because even at their worst, they somehow managed to make it. DZ and like Sweet. Because those are the only three teams that I can think of off the top of my head that haven't missed lands. Like I'm pretty sure Phony has missed lands in the past. Uh, yeah, year two, but that was kind of before his rise. Like since year three, he has not missed lands. Um, but like Optic missed one last year. Xset was on the brink of maybe missing one this year. Oxygen when they were the BR Demons. Like all these other top teams are missing. So 
literally like three teams are of that category. And all of a sudden, and legacy, actually, I would say legacies of that category. They haven't missed a land either. Shout out Yanya and the boys. So there's like four teams that are of that category. And yet I'm out here being painted as this guy that's a Furia hater because I said they could make it, they could miss it. I got put in that Furia video as like a doubter, which I thought was hilarious because right next to my clip is Zach Mazer from E8 going, me and all my teammates agree, this is a terrible move. And then I'm like, yeah. they might make it, they might not. <laughs> you could say that about any team in the league. Like You could say that about about anything at all yeah you'd be like are you gonna die today uh maybe it's not even a take maybe it's not even a take like i didn't have any strong opinions about that furia (laughs) roster because i i liked what they were doing with vax i actually if they still had vax and there was that consistency then maybe i would have said they're top five but just because it was a roster change i was like i don't know we'll see how it goes and now i'm being paid to this furia hater first off when keon made that point number one (laughs) My content and J Miles content are not the same. I don't post news. Okay. I'm making yeah. like my content takes weeks. Okay. I'm not out here. And this is no offense to J Miles. This is, I'm, I'm not trying to trash him whatsoever, but he's just reacting to the news and sharing it on YouTube and rumors and leaks and all that kind of stuff. I'm not doing any of that. When I post that kind of stuff on Twitter, I'm giving my opinion, dude. Like, and I'm probably dead wrong half the time, but I just don't gloat about those. So nobody knows. And then when I'm right, I guarantee that I'm going to gloat about it on Twitter. Not guarantee. I don't always, but um, I'm not a Furia hater. In fact, I, I'm not going to name the pro players that I was talking to, but three weeks ago, I was playing a game with some pro players. It was not, I'm not going to say the game either. It was not Apex. I was playing a game with some pro players and they asked me. you say the game? Because then it would give it away. It would give it away. Um, oh, because okay. I, then you could narrow it down. I'm not going to say who. But they asked me, they said, and I think this was maybe on one of their streams, but regardless, they said, Jayhawk, do you think Furia is going to make it to land? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I even said on my stream the day before, I think Furia is a lock to make land. This is before they had three more match days to go. This is halfway through their split. I said, I think they're a lock to make land. And they go, "Mm, I don't know. And I was like, wait, you guys don't think they're going to make land? They're like, I don't know. They're having some issues. And then we actually saw those issues bear witness in like scrims. They were doing terrible. They dropped a one point match day. And then I was like, whoa, like I said, Furia was a lock. I thought they were going to go land. I was defending Furia. Okay. Just so we're all clear, I said they were going to go to LAN, and I never changed that stance, even despite the one-point match day. I did throw out the little question of, like, is something going wrong? Like, what the heck's happened? Are they not adjusting? But then they won the next match day, and everything was fine. So this idea that I'm being painted as a Furia hater is crazy. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Sounds like a lot of yapping. Sounds no. like a lot of yapping nope. over there. Nope. Like your chat would say. I don't know. I'm going to see Keon one day. I'm going to store up clips of everything you have said about Furia <laughs> and that team. And I'm going to show him. That was the funny. That was the funniest part about them using your clip over what I had said. Cause I basically called them like one of those teams that just signs a bunch of older players that had bigger names that used to be very good. And then like puts them on a team and everybody thinks they're going to be great. And then they end up just being like 500 or like just barely above it. Yeah. I said that like, Either moments before or moments after you said that. Right. And they used your clip instead where you're just like, ah, I don't know. Maybe they make it. Maybe they don't. Like they, they could have used. I think that's a good spin zone for you is that your word, even if you don't even say anything, is still some of the most important that you could hear from in this community. I that's mean, a, maybe. I don't that's know. cool. I, I, my assumption, honestly, I could be wrong. Is just that the guy who edited it was just scrolling through looking because like, I got to find because I've done this too, where I just, I need to find clips of like people yeah. doubting them or comments or whatever, because that's kind of the story I'm telling. And I know it happens. And I do know that people were doubting that Furio roster. Like, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I mean, the clip of Zach was very explicit. The guy said that they're making a huge mistake um, and you know, more power to him. He can have whatever take he wants. People were doubting him too. And look at what he eight's doing this split. So um, and, and also to his credit, I will say Furia looked terrible in those scrims and Keon admitted that in the, in the podcast last week, they looked terrible when scrims first started. Um, so anyway, point being, um, I think he was just looking for a clip and you know, it, it kind of fit. So you just throw it in there. I've done that before too. 
Because it's hard. Like, so, where do you even find those clips? You're going to listen to hours and hours of podcasts hoping to find, like, one thing they just said. Just to find one, like, period. offhanded clip. Yeah, to where that yeah. one, I don't know if you guys posted that exact thing on Twitter or on, like, YouTube Shorts or or if he just listened to the pod and heard that one specific thing. But there you go. I don't even think. I think he just watched that one video and was like, oh, yeah. okay. I see how it is. He said, maybe we'll make it. Maybe we won't. Okay. Yeah. I'm amps now. Then maybe that's maybe that just set him off and put him into a so official statement. You 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 kind of hate Furia. No, or I do did not I read hate that wrong? Furia. Okay, uh, sorry, I actually I just, really I guess I heard enjoy watching Furia. Watson is one of my favorite players to watch, dude. Like, I don't. Okay. People, I guess I just heard it wrong. People my bad. can go back my on my Twitter and when the guard dropped Keon Rambo and RKN, I tweeted at Sentinels the minute it happened and said, "At Sentinels, I got the team for you." What does Sentinels do? They pick them up. I don't want to say that I'm the reason they got signed, but I certainly maybe put it in their heads. I don't know. I don't so, know. So you don't hate them? No, I don't hate Keon. I don't hate Rambo. Or Rambo. He's not on Furia. I don't hate Rambo either. I actually love Rambo. That guy's that guy's a homie. But I don't hate Watson. I don't hate Madness. I don't hate PvP, a.k.a. JMO. I don't hate anyone on Furia. This narrative okay. is ridiculous. I don't have any team in the ALGS I hate. I know that like most casual fans are like, oh, I hate this team because I don't like their IGL or whatever. I don't have any team that is like that. Any single team. So you don't hate them? No. I do not hate just maybe, maybe you maybe that's a strong word. Maybe you just slightly dislike them. I don't dislike them. I was happy to see them go to <laughs> land, dude. Like, what do so, we do? I'm trying to answer the questions for the people. Okay, I'm just trying. The, I'm the just question trying to get the has been answered. I like okay. Furia. Sorry, I mean, I'm I just, not going to sit here and say that like they're my favorite team in the world because I haven't met any uh, of them personally where I have like with Xset or SSG. Like I've gotten to interview the Oxygen. It. I've gotten to interview those teams. I've gotten to meet them in person at Champs. I didn't get to meet Furia. So like I don't know any of them like that to where I could say we're like friends. But like as a spectator watching them, like, yeah, I like them. I'm happy that they're doing well. Okay. I think I got it now. I think. I think Re I got recap it, it back for me so that I so they're not your favorite team that's what I heard I heard you say they're not my favorite team in the world and then I kind of just blacked out I think maybe I have a bias I think you have, I think that might be I think you just want to spin this story so that nobody goes back and looks for your <laughs> comments about this team that are way more harsh than anything I've whoa, ever said whoa 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 just for I the record never, too I would never say a bad thing on that ever. same episode I and I am like friends with the Oxygen Boys. Like shout out Vane. Like he's one of the first pros to ever like support me and like show up in one of my. Like I think he showed up my first ever watch party and was like, "Dude, you're making great content. Like you're awesome." Like I got to meet them at Champs. I got to interview them for both my video and the Champs video. Like the boys are homies. I love the Oxygen Boys. And on that podcast, I said I don't think they're going to qualify for land. I had a stronger take on Oxygen than I did Furia because they were landing at Command Center and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, I think they should go back to barometer. They did, and they're doing great now. But like, and those are those guys are my friends. I like optic. I like X. If they miss land, I'm gonna make a video about them. Like it's how it goes. I guess. Don't I guess? I guess don't I guess? <laughs> no, I'm. Just, I Here's think I worst, got it now. Here's the worst part about this: is that Keon is like, I assume he doesn't listen to this podcast, so there's no way he's gonna see this, and I don't really care, but. I just feel like he's going to have some, you know, he's just going to be like, yeah, that guy's a hater forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could clip, I could, I could clip this and send it to him. I could clip the part where you said they're not like my favorite team and then try to put in some, you can send you know, other parts. Want. If he, if he wants me to be a hater if he, and it, he's on his Michael Jordan thing where Michael Jordan's like, and I took that personally, more power to you. I, I really don't care. There we much. go. There we go. <laughs> It's my favorite recurring storyline now. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things it, in the this world. This is going to be real great, too, because I'm releasing a Furia video this upcoming week. It's not about the current oh. Furia, but the previous one. This is going to be real great stuff when uh, yeah, when this video comes out. Yeah. There we go. Real great stuff. Inside info for the people. Video coming out. Yeah. New Jayhawk content on the way. Throwback uh, video. On the there we go. One. You got anything else before we round this bad boy out? We got a good hour. Probably could have gone for three. Um, did we talk about LAN? Like it being announced and all that stuff? I mean, we did we in did the context of the cheating. But in the want... cheating. I guess we could announce it. Yeah, uh, LAN going to be, gonna be. what's it called? The Galen Center? Yeah, the Galen Center. 
the Galen Center in Los Angeles. Uh, Land's going to be there May 2nd through 5th. Tickets go on sale March 22nd. And you're going to be able to buy, I think it's going to be for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I would I would get on your tickets immediately, uh, especially if you don't live in California, trying to get the hotels and stuff like that. As a Californian, I would like to say be careful out in Los Angeles. That's just me trying to, you know, give you a heads up. Just be careful out there. Um, me personally, probably going to get a hotel about 30 minutes out, maybe in like Pasadena or something. And then try to drive in because the hotel prices are insane right next to the venue. I think it's like $400 a night. That's just some insider info, some insider tips from somebody who's lived here um, if you can do that. But it's going to be a great time. I can't wait for it. I am going to be there. I will 100% be there. Jayhawk, are you going? Uh, I mean, it's it's still up in the air. I still have, up in the air? I, if they invite me, yes, I will be there because uh, then you know they're going to pay for that stuff. So I don't have to pay anything. Um, the thing I'm weighing right now, if they don't invite me is obviously if I pay the money, I lose money to go do it, which would be fine for the experience. But if I'm there in person, I can't live stream it. So I'm not only losing money, but I'm also potentially losing growth on the stream. So it's, it's, uh, it's up in the air. We'll see about it. I would prefer to go. I'm okay. Not streaming the land because I think just being there is such a fun experience and I love the growth, but you know, that'll come. Um, so yeah, that's that's the hope, but it it just depends. Yeah. So um, Jayhawks up in there still potentially might go. Uh, I think we're gonna get some of the boys over there. I think Weeps is gonna be there. I'm not sure uh, if anybody didn't see Enoch's uh, announcement. We'll probably talk yeah, more that's... about it when he comes back on the show. But he's got some <clears throat> things going on, so he might not be able to make it. But I will for sure be there. Weeps will for sure be there. If you see us out there. Random. Come say what's up. Don't know if you saw this. I heard uh, the boy Finicky is going to be there too. I also saw Finn. Finn uh, Finn texted me on the side. I was just about to say that. Finn Finn is on the way as well. Um, and I think he told me that he is cleared to do an episode. So we're going to have a throwback episode, I think. Fingers Sheesh. crossed with Finn back on the pod. Live in person at LAN? Live in person. You're going to bring all the um, gear and everything? Yeah. I got, I got brand new equipment that I can like travel with. Because before I would have had to have like a whole rig in order to get this thing going. But now I have some some upgraded equipment that'll make it a little bit easier. I'm hoping to get some more interviews uh, with some players we've had in the past. Maybe some interviews we haven't had before. A lot of stuff going down. I'm trying to work out all the details, but I cannot wait for Lan. When they announced it, there was no better feeling in the world knowing it's like four hours away from me. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm super pumped going to be a great time probably going to get some of the banner boys out there with me as well which should be fun um it's going to be sick i cannot wait if you guys see like i said if you guys see us out there say what's up i had some people in chat already being like i'm buying you a beer no i'm buying you a beer for listening i appreciate you guys i might get expensive uh, and it's going to be fun might get expensive yeah, yeah it might get expensive but it, i'm going to be winning bets is what well that's how i picture it because there's no way I go 0 for 22, 23, 24, 25. I mean, you've right? gotten there's, them all wrong this much. Like, what's to stop you from At some it? point, it has to give, though. You know? I mean, but the tough part is there is a little bit of skill involved. And I just don't know if that skill has been shown so far. <laughs> yeah, you got a point. <laughs> also, also, I do need somebody to make... You know how you've seen, like, a lot of those shirts that are coming out right now? You see them in Instagram ads where it's, like, a bunch of, like, pictures of the same person. And it'll just say their name, like... Mbappe and yeah. it's just a bunch of pictures. I need somebody to do that, but with complexity. So I just needed to say complexity. And then I need Kim Shi, I need Monsoon, and I need Lou all on there. And I need to rock that on on Championship Sunday because they're gonna be there and they're gonna win the whole damn thing. So if somebody could help me out with that, please let me know because I need that. You know what we do Wait, need to set up actually. Do, if I just said that, does that that's me that means they're not gonna make it then, huh? They're gonna make it to champs I, or to land? No, no, no. It's just championship Sunday. Oh, well that, I mean, yeah, that's still up in the air. Who knows? Maybe I should get, maybe you should say not complexity to counter the jinx. Maybe you should. Yeah, that's what we do. Maybe because you're actually the true Furia hater. You wear the Furia shirt that has Keon and all and Watson and madness and Jamo yeah. on there. Um, I can't, I couldn't do you're that to the madness though. Madness is another short King. The like fellow me. Short King. I couldn't do it. Is this why yeah, you I love Tony so much? I didn't even know he was short, but Tony if he is short, short that makes hell, me like dude. him even more. Tony is like hey, four. 
<laughs> that picture you showed of him in the button up shirt on your stream had me crying. I, I, <laughs> Shout out dude, Bobby, I've never by the way. seen that. That's picture. my goat right there. Dude, that is so funny. That yeah. looks like he was applying to like a Vons or something. No, like that, I, like a I picture legit on his think, application. I think bro got back home from church, took the picture, and you know, there you go. <laughs> like, I think that's what happened. <laughs> Uh, it's a top 10 pick. Yeah. It's a top 10 pick. I was, yes, we I was going to say, by the way. Um, actually, hold on. What? Something <laughs> happened? Exet tweeted six hours ago, game day will do what it takes to make it back to land. Luminosity responds to Exet four minutes ago, and they said, wait a minute. And it's the gif of Drewski going, what do you mean by that? We'll do what it <laughs> takes to make it to land. What do you mean by that? Hey. <laughs> hey, did you see the one where Jen, uh, he, where Jen tweeted out like, um, when I got the call that Jen Burton was down, it's Shrek looking up, and he's like, yeah, like yeah, he's yeah, halfway smirking. <laughs> that one had me laughing too. I always love to see Jen in there. Always love to see Jen in there. Okay, well, uh, real quick, all right, ladies and gentlemen, sign off. Okay. Um, because you know you're gonna be there, and Keon will be there. I think this uh, this one v one basketball game needs to get set up. Oh, um, yeah. So we can just see how many points you score so that these delusions you've had of like, I could kill pros and Apex can kind of get quelled as you play a guy who's not even a professional basketball player and realize you can't score a single point. Uh, he gave me a point. Are He's, you serious? He said you might score one. Here's the way I think you score. He said, one. I'll give you one. Okay. I mean, but that doesn't count then. Like, he's just, he's letting you score. No, no. I think he meant, I see. I see you, kid. Okay. You're so, out yeah. here grinding. Then on that, here's how I think that happens. He just won't guard you, and you'll hit a jump shot. If you can hit an open jump shot, then maybe that's how you get your point, and then he'll respect it and actually guard you and shut you down. But you're that's the way giving you no you. respect to my teardrop shot. I have a ridiculous left-handed teardrop. He's like 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, but that's no, not that important. And you're not in tall, this. so... That's true, but okay, he hold on. For, for people who don't know, I wanted to ask Keon last week if I played him one-on-one -on -one in basketball, first to 11, how many points would I get? Zero. I forgot to ask the question, and he responded, and he said, I'll give you one. And Jayhawk is now saying I'd get none. You'd get none. You would only one. score if he left you wide open because he doesn't respect your potential jump shot, and you made it. And then what he if I pretended after that. What if I pretended to be right-handed for like the first three possessions and then i went hard left because i'm left-handed it wouldn't matter the dude he played collegiate basketball i'm pretty sure like uh yeah but i used to play with all my boys on the elementary school hoop and i dog, was the best have one you, have you seen the the whole thing that ha you know who brian scalabrini is yeah you have you seen the whole thing that happened to him where people were calling him out on instagram this happened like yes. three four years ago P like a bunch was of it, people was it like I'm closer to yes. like I'm closer to LeBron okay, yeah. than, than, than you, you are to me. So the whole thing was a bunch of people were calling him out on Instagram because he's like renowned or kind of viewed as like one of the worst players in the NBA at the time. And this was like, I think, years after he retired, actually. And so he's like, you know what? Let's go. Let's play one on one. Let's see what happens. He beat every single one of them without giving up a single point. He was bodying them. He was blocking them. He was dunking on them. He was shooting threes. And then he told them, he said, I want you to realize I am closer to LeBron than you are to me. So just so we're Damn. aware, obviously that's an NBA player. So, and Keon's not at that level, but at the same time, you have to realize that like, think of all the guys who were nasty in middle school and you did not make a middle school basketball team. I assume you didn't even try. I, I never tried. I did, well, yeah. Cause I was too focused on my studies. Yeah, sure. I didn't okay. even, I, um, but like those guys were better than you. Okay. And then think about all the guys in high school that were better than you. Keon was better than every single one of those guys because they didn't go play collegiate basketball, and he did. I don't know, dude. I feel like you're not giving me the respect. One time I did like I, – I went hard to the left. I faked the layup no. on this side and then went underneath and got the perfect amount of spin no. and got that thing in there. I think I could hit him with like at Here's least two thing, of those. Though. He's so tall, and there's such a height difference between you two that he doesn't even have to jump to block you so you could try to pump fake him and he will just put his arm out and then the moment you don't shoot it he will just move the arm to wherever you put the ball tell me why i had daydreams where i just dunked on him no you like, what i'm not i'm not saying that would happen can you I'm touch rim? i had 
on the elementary school one, yeah, that's eight okay. foot. Yeah, no, like you're not gonna dunk on him, dude. Even if it was the eight but foot imagine, one, though, you're how not gonna cool dunk on be. him. He could just stand there with his hands up, and you're not gonna dunk on him. I need to send you a video of when I dunked in high school because I told the guy there was a there was a guy who was super tall, and we were playing PE basketball, and I told this kid, I was like, hey. I want you to pretend to fall down in front of the hoop and I'm going to jump off your back and dunk it. And he was like, all right. So he did it. Like he, he like went down. I went up for the dunk and the guy jumped and swatted it at the last second. And he was like, holy shit. And he was like, did you plan that? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I want to see if you can do it without me blocking you. So he was like, do it again. So we, we put the guy, he got down on all fours. I ran, jumped, and I actually dunked jumping off that guy's back. I got to send you the video. But he, I mean, that one, I was not being defended. So, but the first one I almost got, I was like right there and he just swatted You had to it jump off a side. dude's back. Yeah, but if That's like, not going to be available in a 1v1 against Keon. I just wanted to tell you a cool story. Like that, that, see, but you brought you this up in me, the bro. context of the fact that you think you can beat him in a one-on-one. I, but I said, what if I just dunked? Which is obviously not going to happen, but I just wanted to, like, and what you if? Told me, how cool that would be. Yeah. I'm I a mean, dreamer. Like, what if I was Superman? Like, that'd be sick. That would be so sick. See, like, I'm happy for you that you had that dream. That'd be so cool. But that doesn't make like, me happy yeah. because then I think I'm not Superman and then I'm sad. Yeah, but, like, the whole dream part is, like, the, the draw. You're like, dude, yeah, what if then, I was Superman? What would I do? And then the moment you're done, it's sad. You're Superman in, in my eyes, in Apex competitive, uh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm good at Apex stuff. I don't try to fly. I don't go out and daydream about flying. I instead just do Apex stuff. But how sick, you know? Like, no, like no, how? No, no. See, like no, how no. sick would it be no, though? No, no, no. <laughs> this is the best podcast I've ever this done. Is the worst podcast. <laughs> uh, Moral you got the story. Anything else? Cheaters. You're the true fury a hater, not me. Yeah. And well, yes. If, 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 what what have you ever done for Furia positively? Uh His Watson was our first interview. Okay. And it was awesome. Okay. We brought on Keon last week and it was so cool. Yeah. And I also put them in my top 5 logo rankings for all teams NA. Which is crazy. I believe I put the them second. Why is that crazy? I don't know. I don't. I feel like their logo is just like a panther. That's one of the sickest animals. If I had to rank all the sickest animals, number one, peregrine falcon. Number two, mountain lion slash puma slash cougar. I mean, I will say, want. I don't know how many cool logos there really are in NA. Cloud Nine being back, they have the best logo. I'm not going to argue with anyone on that. Their logo is better just than three any of nines. Yeah, but it forms a cloud. But it's like the most basic cloud. It's not. Uh, what is that? But it's, it's so like a, clean. I I don't like their colors. I think they you don't like benefit the blue. A, it's like a sky blue. It I all think they ties need a together. Color. What does the word furia even color. mean? I don't know, but it it's sounds something cool. Brazilian. I bet even actually. when even when Enoch says it wrong, it sounds cool. Furia, furia. Furia means very great anger. No, oh, wait, that's fury. Hold on. No, I want furia. <laughs> furia. Oh no, this this is this is what it means. Furia means rage. In that's sick. Hold on. Actually, I don't even know if that's Brazilian. It gave me a random language on Google Translate that it detected. Hello, can I pick Brazilian? SSG's got to be up there too. Oh wait, it's it's not Brazilian. I'm so dumb. It's Portuguese. If Weeps was here, he'd just roast me so bad for that. It means fury. It means fury. So what does SSG's that have to do with a panther? Because because a panther can rip you to shreds if it really wants to. Why not a, a lion or a cheetah or a jaguar? Why a panther? Well, I mean, I guess it could be either of those. You know what? I, you know what I always think about when, when I think it comes of to like rage. I don't think of a panther personally. You don't think of a panther when I think when it of comes to rage. rage. No. Then what do you think of? I don't know, like Mike Tyson. They're not going to make that Mike, their logo, but like a panther would rip Mike Tyson to shreds. But even if you thought of rage, if I gave you the word rage and I said, "Give me an animal," there's no way the panther is the first big cat you would even name. You would name a lion or a Maybe tiger, or like a tiger, but it could still be a tiger. It's not Maybe. a tiger. It's a panther. 
the 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 jaguar i think has the strongest bite force out of all the big cats that's pretty rage inducing the it wants to bite down the on bon- you so the strongest hard. bite force of any animal in the world you think hippos are rageful they can be have you seen some of those videos hippos chasing after nasty. boats they are nasty they're nasty dude. Like, hey we can agree on this i would think of a hippo if their logo was a, a hippo that's yeah slap. okay I'll, that's slap. I'll agree on that that's i'll slap. agree on that if it was a hippo, I'd be so down. I'd be so. There's in. A I actually think a professional team should be at least not not maybe not named the hippos because that's kind of like a lame name, but maybe like the logo being a hippo. But imagine and the hippos take the championship, you know? And they fly and, yeah, they call their fans the like the hippies. I don't. That'd know. be kind of sick. I don't know something like that. But there's a place in Texas called Hutto. It's like I don't know between it's like Dallas and Austin. It's like maybe an hour outside of Austin or something, maybe not even an hour. And their mascot for their local high school is the hippos, the, the Hutto hippos. And if you drive around the city or the town, there's a bunch of random little hippos. And there's like a certain number of them. And you, it's like a sightseeing thing. You can go find these little tiny hippos, not tiny. They're like, they're like sizable and they're all like painted different colors and stuff. Fun fact. That's actually sick. I also think, I also, yeah, I forgot what I was thinking. But you just reminded me of the, we used to have a, we have the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. It's like one of our main attractions. And we used to have a hippo there. And I re- watched him crush a watermelon one time when I was a kid. He died. It was really cool though, watching him crush that watermelon. Speaking of crazy logos, I just remembered the UC Irvine team, I think is the banana slugs. Nice. Not menacing whatsoever. Like that's the opposite of, if Fury was the banana slugs though, that'd be kind of cool too. I don't think they'd ever do that. By the way, just random aside, um, I tweeted that video of Hal with the aimbot thing, and there are a legitimate number of replies that I think believe this is legit. They say, yeah, that's why controller is better than M and K. Pretty sure that's just controller aim assist. I hope that they're memeing, but... I don't think they are. I kind of wonder if they really are. <laughs> I don't think they are. Uh, what I've learned from this entire season of uh, of just like watching TSM streams is that there is a vast number. I don't want to disrespect the true TSM fans because I'm sure they're out. You probably feel this with the Cowboys sometimes. Oh, no. I you hate You guys are Cowboys America's fans. team. Yeah. Like, there are some the fans way, where if they'll say something and to tried you. tried to say some BS, like the Patriots are America's team. Dog, that crap existed before the Patriots were even relevant. Like, Tom Brady wasn't even in college yet when they were called America's team, big buddy. Okay? He that was called, a marketing term did. from a beer company that was offered to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they declined it, and the Cowboys took it, and that's why we get called that. You're not America's team. Okay. He called I think he called them America's team. He did. Team he last did week, last right? week when you he made did. the comparison. And he did. just so we're all clear, the Patriots are not America's team. Love them or hate them, the Cowboys have the biggest fan base, and that's why they are America's team. There, there you have it. There you have it. Uh one last note before we leave, going back to Furia's logo. Do you ever think about like the mountain lion and just think like that's our lion? Because that makes me feel like an <laughs> immense amount of pride. As an American being like, we have our own lion. It may not be as, be as big as yours, okay? It may not be as sure. menacing, but it's like our lion. I f- it makes me feel pride being like, yeah, this it would might, lose in a fight, but I love that lion. Some people are going to lose some respect for me for this, and others are going to gain it. But the moment I think of a mountain lion, I instantly think of High School Musical. They're not even called the mountain lions. They're called the wildcats. But for some reason... That's all I think about. I don't Great think movies. I don't think that that's our lion. Like, I know it is, but I don't like actively think that. I just think. But that's not. The, but that's not the the wildcat's fault. I'm not know, blaming the wildcat. Being... I'm just saying okay. I have never thought about the mountain lion in the way that you just put it. And when you put it that way, it's kind of cool. It's like, damn, like, yeah. What if I we like stew on that? What if we like built an army of them it. and like decided to go and like attack people with them? And be like, that's our lion, baby. You know, I used to have like this dream where or I tried to write a book on this when I was 10. I tried to write a, like a full length novel at 10 years old about this. Th- I had this dream one night where every single person in the world was born with a very specific animal. Like they were born at the same time. And then you grew up with that animal your entire life until you died. And you just used its different things for like to your advantage. So I had this dream that I was in high school. And I had this mountain lion, like other kids had like polar bears, elephants, all this stuff. And you just go to school, like riding it. 
And then you would like hop off, be like, okay, feed it. It'd go to its own classes. It had its own like schedule. Sometimes your schedule's lined up for lunch or whatever, PE, whatever you, whatever have you. They're all working on their own skills. And then at the end of that dream, there was a massive world war of just every nation going out. I don't even know if it was like nations because I was so young, but I just pictured like my mountain lion with like a face mask, like armor, like covering its eyes and stuff. And there was this crazy war and I was just on my lion's back with a spear and I'm just tossing it. I'm just throwing it at different stuff. And it was like one of the sickest dreams I ever had. And then I wanted to write a full length book on it and I got about like one and a half pages deep. But tell me that wouldn't be so awesome. If you were just <laughs> born with a specific animal. Would that not be crazy? You just gave up on the book, dude. Like, what the heck? Man? I was ten. I didn't. I didn't what if, I didn't know, what if like, that blew up? Workings. and you became like a world-renowned author. They made a movie deal and everything. I think there was something similar. It was like a few years later. I saw the movie, or I didn't see the movie, but I saw like the ads for the movies, like the Golden Compass. Like this kid had like a polar bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that was like the whole premise because I never ended up watching the movie or didn't reading the book. Either. But like, it was like. I, I, maybe I got it from seeing that commercial and I like it implanted in my brain and then I like had my own little spin off of it. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't understand the inner workings of like the publication industry. So I was a little behind on that, but I still think that would be so sick. What would your animal be if you could choose? Uh, I don't know. Probably like a hawk or something, you know? That, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Wow, this has been a great. Po- this is awesome. This is yeah. one of my favorite shows we've ever done. Yeah. Um. Okay, ladies and gents, that should just about do it for this week's episode of the Apex the Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, it's been a crazy week. We'll try to keep you updated with all the fallout that comes throughout the rest of uh the rest of this event, and um maybe we have another emergency pod with with the rest of the boys when they get back from vacation talking about it giving their opinions. We'll have to see. But uh, before you leave, don't forget to follow Jayhawk. Subscribe to him on YouTube. Check out his Twitter. Check out all the stuff he's got because he is on top of it. I've already used some of his graphs on this show in the past. He's he's on it right now. He's on it. So uh, can't wait to see uh, what happens here coming up at LAN. Hope to see some of you guys there. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next week. See ya.